back to my channel. If you're new, then welcome. My name is Zoe, but most people know me as ZA Reptiles, and many of you know Arcadius already, my iguana. So today's video is one that's been requested since I started my channel, and it's been one that I've been planning on doing since I started my channel. It's one of the reasons that I started my channel in the first place well over a year ago, but I just haven't gotten around to it. Um, but I'm finally doing it. I finally sat down and got all my thoughts together, and we're gonna go ahead and film this video. So today's video is going to be all about iguana nutrition, their diets, what to feed them, how much to feed them, supplementation, the whole nine yards. And to go along with this video, I will have a blog post with all the information as well. So I'll put the link for that in the description below. A lot of people forget that I do have a blog that I sometimes post reptile related things on. I don't use it very often. Where are you going? I figured he wouldn't stay out for this video pretty long because he's very antsy, he's very hungry. Um, after I film this, I'm going to the store to buy iguana food. So he's a, ow, you have my stomach. Okay, he didn't feel like joining us for the video today, but he got through the intro, so that's uh, not too bad, I guess. I'll just have to insert video clips here and there throughout the video since he won't be in it, apparently. Anyway, iguana nutrition. So we're gonna jump right into it. Okay, so I'm just gonna start off by saying, Iguana diets are a very controversial topic as far as what to feed and whatnot. Um, but I'm gonna tell you guys information based off of my research, what I've learned, and what I personally do with Arcadius. So definitely do a little more research. You know, I will reference quite a few different sites in this video and in my blog post, and you can access them through my blog post. So definitely check out everything that I kind of mention as far as other sites because that's where all of my information came from when I was learning. Okay, so to start off, iguanas are, or green iguanas, are strict herbivores. So, no bugs, no animal protein, only plants. Greens, veggies, fruits, plant protein, no bugs. Okay, so first we're going to start off talking about water and then we'll go into food. So, water is very, very important for iguanas. They need high humidity. A lot of iguanas suffer from dehydration. So you want to make sure that your iguana is getting enough water because as much as food is important, so is water. So obviously you want to provide them with a large tub that they can climb into, but you want to provide a separate bowl of water they can't climb into to drink from because you don't want them drinking from the same water that they're climbing into and possibly defecating in. So offer a small dish that's meant for drinking water and make sure you it's reptile safe water, whether you buy it in a gallon at a store or you get something like Reptisafe to treat the water with. Now you might not really ever see your iguana drink from this bowl and that is okay. Um, they get a lot of their water from the humidity in the air and from their food since they're eating a lot of plants and fruits and whatnot. And some fruits are actually very, or some foods are actually very high in water, such as watermelon and cucumber. There's not much nutritional value to them, but they're very high in water. So it's a good way to increase your iguana's water intake. And lastly, make sure that your iguana has access to clean water every day. Old water that gets all dirty builds up bacteria and it's unsanitary. So make sure your iguana has access to clean water every single day to drink from. Okay, so now we're going to jump into food. We talked about water for a little bit now. Let's focus on food. So one of the questions I get asked all the time is when and how often to feed an iguana. Now, when? I'm going to say the earlier the better. You know, an hour or two after the lights come on in the morning is ideal. But you know, morning, mid-morning, early, early, early afternoon is best because you want them to have time to sit and bask under their basking lane, their UVB, to properly digest their food. So you don't want to feed them before they go to bed because then it's just sitting in their stomach and they're not digesting it properly or utilizing it because they're not under their basking lane in UVB. So feed them earlier in the day so they have plenty of time to sit and digest under their lights. Now, how much do you feed? This is where iguanas make it super easy because iguanas control themselves. When they're full or they're content, they stop. So you don't really have to monitor them. You can feed them as much as they want. So what you should do is fill their dish and 
if you see that it's empty at any point during the day, you know that you need to feed them more. At the end of the day, if there's food left over in the dish, then you know that your iguana ate enough and it got all that it wanted to eat. So they're really good at telling you how much to feed them. You want to make sure there's always leftover food at the end of the day because that tells you they ate enough. If you have an empty bowl, they're probably still a little hungry. Okay, so there are three main basics to iguana diets and I'll talk a little bit about them individually, kind of. So the three main things, the first one is to make sure that you're offering a variety of foods because you don't want to eat the same thing every day. That's really, really boring. So offer a variety of foods. Number two is to make sure that you are focusing on the two to one calcium to phosphorus ratio. This ratio is very, very important to a healthy iguana's life <laughs> um, because calcium, obviously, is very important for your bones and for your muscles and just in general, very important, especially for iguanas. And what happens a lot of the times is people aren't feeding foods that have this proper two to one ratio. Typically, they'll feed foods that are higher in phosphorus than calcium. And then the iguana suffers from things like metabolic bone disease. So that is what Arcadius had. If you want to learn more about metabolic bone disease, I did a whole little series on it and check that out. Um, but I'm not going to get into that here. So make sure the foods you're feeding have a two to one ratio. At least you want them to be higher in calcium than phosphorus. So your staple foods will be higher in calcium than phosphorus. And then number three is a good diet isn't complete without a good exposure to UVB and the right temperatures. So you can feed the proper diet all you want, but it's not gonna do too much for your iguana if they don't have a good UVB source and the proper temperatures to help them digest. I do also want to mention that I know that two to one ratio can be kind of confusing at first. If you go to the greeniguanasociety.org, they have a food chart that lists all the different kinds of foods that you can feed your iguana, and it tells you the calcium to phosphorus ratio, and it also tells you whether it is a staple food or an occasional food, or a treat or almost never food. So it's a very good place to go and check out. Like I said, if you go to my blog post, I'm gonna link in the description, you can access the site from there. All right, so now we're gonna talk about what foods to feed your iguana. So iguana diets consist of four main things. You have your greens, your veggies, your fruits, and your supplements. So you want your iguana diets to be about 45% greens, 45% veggies and 10% fruits and then your supplements or as I say 50-50 greens and veggies a little bit of fruits and your supplements. So obviously your iguana's diet should be mostly made up of greens and veggies. Okay so I'm not going to list off every single thing in the world that you could feed your iguanas. That's what all those other websites are for. I'm going to tell you my go-to's for foods to feed. So for greens my go-to greens are turnip greens, mustard greens, dandelion greens, collard greens, and watercress. Those greens have the best calcium to phosphorus ratios. And they're especially good when you get a couple and you mix them together in a salad for your iguana. Try not to pick just one green for your iguana. Try to get at least two, maybe even three, and mix them together to add, create like a variety. Make it a really good salad. And then a couple other good greens to mix in with those staple greens are bok choy, escarole, and endive. They don't have quite as good of a ratio, but they're still a pretty good green to mix in with staple greens to, to add some more flavor and more variety. All right, so now we're gonna talk about veggies. So my go-to veggies are squash, like acorn squash and butternut squash, parsnip, peas, and green beans. Those are all really good staple veggies, especially the parsnip and the squashes. Those are really good veggies for your iguanas. And then there's several other really good ones to add in. Um, maybe not as a staple, more of an occasional, a sometimes veggie, like carrots, asparagus, mushrooms, bell peppers. I almost always, or every other day, add in some bell pepper to Arcadius' salads, just because bell peppers are a really good taste enhancer and a color enhancer. So it kind of adds some color if you're getting like a red bell pepper or a yellow bell pepper. It adds some color to their salads. And it doesn't have too much to offer, but it's not gonna do any harm either. So it's just a really good enhancer for your iguana salads. So now on to fruits. 
So my main go-to fruit is mango. Arcadius loves mango. Mango is pretty much known as iguana crack because most iguanas, if not all iguanas, absolutely love mango, okay, mango. But mango, papaya, and cactus leaves or prickly pear are like the best fruits that you could offer your iguanas. Those are like the three main staple fruits. Um, the only thing I'm ever able to find though is mango. So mango is usually my go-to. But there's other really good fruits. Um, and like I said, you can kind of get away with offering a variety of fruits because you're offering so like so little, like a little amount of fruit compared to veggies and greens. So I usually use the fruits as where I um, kind of offer the fun stuff. So I make sure that he gets really good greens and really good veggies so that he can have fun fruits. So the fruits like that that I'm talking about are your berries, your melons, your grapes and bananas. So those are all things that I'll typically give Arcadius. Um, obviously not in large amounts, but those are things he absolutely loves. And he only gets a little bit of it with his salads. And of course, there's always those extra special treats. And by extra special treats, I mean flowers, okay? Iggy's love flowers. So I'm talking dandelion flowers, hibiscus flowers, um, dahlia flowers, there's a lot of different flowers. So just make sure that you are looking to see what flowers are safe for iguanas to eat and make sure that where you're getting them, they're not in an area that's been pesticide covered. Like you don't wanna feed your iguana flowers that are covered in pesticides. So just make sure that you're feeding iguana safe flowers and that those flowers themselves are safe for your iguana. So not covered in pesticides. So then before we get into supplements, I'm gonna to talk to you guys a little bit about the foods that you'll never see me feed Arcadius. And these are foods that a lot of other people do feed their iguanas or their bearded dragons or their lizards, um, but these are just foods I personally will never feed him. And starting off with lettuces, like iceberg lettuce and romaine lettuce. Now these aren't necessarily bad for your iguana, but they have really no nutritional value to add to your iguana's diet. So for me personally, it's just not worth going out and spending the money on these lettuces and cutting them up for them and having them eat them when there's, they have nothing to give. When I can be getting several different greens that have really good nutritional values to give to him. So you'll never see me feed any of my animals lettuces like iceberg lettuce and romaine lettuce because there's just, they have nothing to offer. Now these next foods that I'm going to tell you that I don't feed have to do with oxalates and goitrogens. So as much as you need to be aware of calcium and phosphorus when you're feeding your iguana, you always want to also be aware of oxalates and goitrogens. So both of these have their own issues. Oxalates are known to bind calcium and this is a problem because of the oxalates binding the calcium, the iguana's body cannot then use the calcium. So it's almost like you're not even feeding them enough calcium at all because the oxalates could possibly bind it. So you want to avoid foods that are really high in oxalates or offer them very infrequently like as a treat. Now the other one is goitrogens and goitrogens are known for binding iodine and the problem with this is it can lead to hypothyroidism. So both of those are things you want to avoid. So if a food is really high in either or or both then you don't really want to offer it that often. Now the main foods that come to mind when I think of oxalates and goitrogens that I will not feed are spinach, kale, broccoli, cauliflower, and carrots. Those are some foods that you will never see me feed our Arcadius because they are high in goitrogens and oxalates and they're not considered a staple. And most of them are considered like a treat or rare. So um, those are things I'll never feed. And a lot of people do feed like kale or spinach, they'll mix it in. And it can be okay if you offer it once in a great while and you mix it in with things that are nutritionally really beneficial to your iguana's diet. But for me, it's just not worth it. Just like the romaine and the iceberg, why am I gonna go out and spend money on these greens that aren't beneficial when I can be buying these greens that are staples and really, really good, and I can mix those together to offer a variety. So, you see what I'm saying? And I might be partially biased because it was a diet of kale, spinach, and broccoli that partially contributed to Arcadius ending up with severe metabolic bone disease. So I might be a little biased because he went through that. And so I just have a hatred for those foods. Um, but that's just my personal opinion. I will not feed those foods. And there are people that do, but I personally just won't. 
Okay, so now we're gonna end this video talking about supplementation. So there are three main types of supplementation you want to be giving your iguanas. The first one being calcium, preferably without D3. So your iguana is synthesizing D3 from the UVB that it is getting. So with a proper diet and proper UVB, your iguana is already getting the D3 that it needs. So over supplementing can also lead to issues and you don't want to over supplement with D3. So ideally, if you are feeding a really good diet and you have a really good UVB, your husbandry is on point, then don't get calcium with D3. Get calcium without D3. Now I personally use um, Reptocalcium from Zoomed. Um, so it's Reptocalcium without D3. It's a really good brand, really common. A lot of people use that brand. Now how often you supplement? This is another question I get. Um, it kind of varies based on the age of your iguana and the condition. So you want to be supplementing calcium a lot more to younger iguanas than you would to older iguanas. Like babies, you want to be supplementing them pretty much every day. Um, and as they grow, you can back off a little bit. So you really want to be supplementing um, gravid females, so females that have eggs, because obviously eggs need calcium. And if the iguana isn't getting that extra calcium, it's just going to take it from its body and you're going to have a lot of issues. So gravid females need a lot of supplementation and not so healthy iguanas. So like when Arcadius came to me with his severe metabolic bone disease, he was getting a dusting of calcium every single day. So again, it depends on the age of your iguana and the condition of your iguana. Now there is a chart that kind of has, kind of helps you out, tells you how many days a week to do, um, to do dustings. And again, you can find that in my blog post. I think this site is a NAPSID, um, and I, I link it in my blog post. So if you would like to see that chart that tells you how often during the week to dust and like based on your iguana's age, head over to my blog post and you'll find that there. So the next supplementation, the first one was calcium without D3. The next one is multivitamins. So just like us, multivitamins are extremely helpful. They fill in the gaps for the vitamins that you might not be getting in your diet. And they're just great. Overall, just great. You want your multivitamins. So you also want to be giving your animals multivitamins. So there are two that I use. Um, the first one being Reptivite from Zoomed. The other one that's very, very common is, I think it's Herptivite um, from RepCal. So that's another really good one. And I will put Amazon links to these different things below. So the different calciums, the multivitamins, I will put links for those below so that you guys can see exactly what it is that I'm using. Um, so if you want to get any of these supplements, you can head right down to the description and the links will be there. They'll take you right to Amazon, right to those products. Can't get much easier. So again, you want to be giving multivitamins to younger iguanas much more frequently than older iguanas. As they get older, they need less supplementation. That's all there really is to it. And then the last one, which is one that I've gotten questions quite a few times about because I mention it here and there, um, is protein. So yes, they're herbivores, they don't need animal protein, but they still do need protein to be nice and strong. So what they need is plant protein. And by plant protein, I mean alfalfa. Alfalfa is a really good source of protein to add to your iguana's diet. So personally, I have alfalfa um, that I found in a pet store. Um, you find it in like the small mammal section for rabbits and whatnot. So the ones that I got are um, like blocks and then we just shred it up. And so it's like a dust that I can sprinkle. Um, another way that you can get alfalfa is by going to a pharmacy and getting alfalfa, like little tablet type of things, you know, like, like um, vitamin form that you would take personally. And then you crush those and sprinkle them on your salads or your guana salads. Um, so alfalfa, a lot of people I feel like don't really realize the need for protein in the alfalfa, but trust me, it's a really good addition. Help your iguana be nice and healthy. Get some alfalfa. I sprinkle this on Arcadius' salad pretty much every other day. Now, some iguanas are a lot pickier than others. Arcadius is not picky at all, but some are. So you don't wanna just sprinkle the supplements on and call it a day. Sprinkle it on and mix it up. That way, no matter what they eat, they're gonna be getting that supplementation. Otherwise, if you sprinkle on top, they might, if you have a picky iguana, just avoid those pieces. So make sure you mix it up 
real good so that your whole salad is covered. All right, so that is it for this video. I hope I answered a lot of questions that you guys have had. I get a lot of questions all the time about guana nutrition. So hopefully this helps. And yeah, so if you don't wanna miss any more videos, make sure to hit that subscribe button and that notification bell. And as always, thank you guys for watching and we'll see you for the next video.